Uh, comments, I move the motion. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the Honourable Member Grant Robertson. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And I do want to begin by uh, agreeing with those last comments from uh, the Leader of House about the importance of the role of the officers of Parliament. Uh, that we have. Uh, the, the committee has, has looked at the work of the Parliamentary Commissioner, the, the Auditor General and the, and the Parliamentary Commissioner of the Environment, the Auditor General and the Ombudsman, and, and these are very important officers. Um, I might say the Auditor General is going to be busy, I think, and certainly extra resources being provided uh, will be very important as the Auditor General embarks on getting to the bottom of the ACC saga and mess that has been uh, created by a whirlwind of national party figures uh, coming together in, in, in what can only be described as a saga, a mess. I've heard it called a schmozzle. There are probably other words as well. The Auditor General will be needing every last piece of the resources that are being provided under this motion to be able to get to the bottom of that particular saga. And in fact, I wonder, Mr uh, Speaker, if the Auditor General will be able to get to the bottom of this saga because I suspect uh, it will be very difficult to get into the minds of the ministers who are involved in this, the, uh, the National Party uh, senior uh, figures such as Michelle Bogue, uh, the members of the board with National Party connections. Uh, this is a saga, a tawdry saga, Mr Speaker, that the Auditor General now has to find uh, her way through. Uh, I think um, she will find it difficult. There are four other inquiries underway. I'm not sure even they will be able to get to the bottom of this mess, particularly the role of ministers and the conduct of ministers in this situation and the links to the National Party. But I wish the Auditor General well in her inquiry, uh, and we do hope that um, we can shed some light on some important issues, um, important issues of the conduct of, of an agency in ACC that we on this side of the House regard very fondly. It's a very important part of our health and social welfare systems, and the fact that it has been dragged through the mud by the involvement of these National Party figures in this saga is most unfortunate, and I do hope that the Auditor-General will be able to, uh, to get to the bottom of some of that. The other uh, thing I wanted to say, Mr Speaker, before I get on to the Ombudsman's office, is just to congratulate the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment. I believe her work has been of an excellent quality in recent times. Most recently today, in the Local Government and Environment Committee, we heard from the Parliamentary Commission for the Environment uh, for, about her report on water quality or the science of water quality in New Zealand. Uh, this is a critical contribution uh, to the debate on those issues. And there are other reports that the uh, Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment is about to undertake, one into the uh, issues of fracking, which I know that there are other members in the House who I'm certain will speak about uh, in time to come. We welcome the Parliamentary Commission for the Environment undertaking that inquiry. There certainly are serious concerns in the community that uh, will be dealt with by that inquiry. And I think what we're seeing there, Mr Speaker, is as the public of New Zealand have an increasing awareness of the importance of the environment to our future in New Zealand, the importance of the environment to our economy, that there will be more work for the Parliamentary Commission for the Environment. And I hope there is, because she brings an independent voice to, uh, that, to the, uh, those very important issues. I hope that the government continues to uh, support her work and encourage that work and, and make sure that it's part of the decision-making process of the government. And I certainly believe the, the current report on water will be a, a significant contribution. Mr Speaker, I want to devote the majority of my comments, however, to the, uh, the Office of the Ombudsman. And I want to say at the outset that it is good that the Officers of Parliament Committee have recommended a funding increase for the Ombudsman. The funding increase of $300,000 is welcome, and I, I do think we need to have that on the record of the House uh, as an important contribution to addressing some of the issues that the Ombudsman's office is facing. But, Mr Speaker, I think we need to reflect on the position that the Ombudsman's office finds itself in now needing that $300,000, because, in fact, when the Chief Ombudsman went to the Government Administration Committee, she did say that she would need about a $1 million dollars extra in order to meet the operating costs of the office and employ two more investigators who are desperately needed to clear the backlog in the Ombudsman's office. So while $300,000 is a welcome addition in funding, it's quite clear to me that the Ombudsman's office is now in a situation where it has been uh, grossly uh, uh, neglected, I believe. And I know I respect what the Leader of the House said about the independent nature of the way that these bodies are funded through uh, the Offices of Parliament uh, Committee. 
But we have to acknowledge that is in the overall context of the government's uh, financial plan, for want of a better word, uh, for the country. And that um, I know the Leader of the House mentioned actually when he just spoke before that there is advice from Treasury as part of this process. Quite clearly, the fact that the government is squeezing the public sector finances, making cuts in the back room, the front office, anywhere you like, has an effect on the amount of money that is available to the Officers of Parliament Committee to fund these kinds of agencies. So I understand the argument of independence, but it is in the context of a government that is starving the public sector of funds. It's acknowledged that it's not just about the back room, whatever that means. The government doesn't have a definition of that. But this week we heard from the Minister of Finance that frontline services are in the gun as well. Frontline services are now what's been attacked, and New Zealanders are starting to notice that. So the Office of the Ombudsman sits in that context, Mr Speaker, because while the Officers of Parliament Committee can find some additional funding, they are operating in an environment where it does not get close to the million dollars that Beverly Wakeham said uh, she needed to run her office properly. Mr Speaker, there's not much more important in our democratic structure than the Office of the Ombudsman. It is the office that ensures that governments are account government departments and agencies are accountable and that they are transparent. The Office of the Ombudsman doesn't just look at an official information at requests. The office looks at the behaviour of departments, particularly in the correctional space, which is a very important area. And many New Zealanders will remember Ombudsman's inquiries into things like uh, the incredibly unfortunate death of Liam Ashley in, in Corrections Department custody. There have been a number of examples of this, and to see that office describing itself, the Chief Ombudsman describing the office itself as being in crisis in front of a select committee, really does call into question the com our commitment collectively to having this agency do the work it needs. Mr Speaker, New Zealanders should be incredibly proud of the fact that we rank so highly in the Transparency International rankings. It's something that is great about our country, but we run the risk when institutions like the Ombudsman's Office say that they are in crisis, are unable to process the requests in front of them, that we will lose that kind of ranking. And it is important for me to put on the record of this House that New Zealanders that I talk to want to see New Zealand keep that transparency ranking, want to see accountable institutions of government, and will be very concerned to know that the Chief Ombudsman feels that her office has been in crisis. As the Chief Ombudsman herself said to the Government Administration Committee, uh, justice delayed is just de denied, and people are already distressed when they approach the office. That's what she said herself, and I can only endorse that comment that if people are waiting years, in some cases, for their complaints to be dealt with by the Ombudsman's Office, we have a serious problem. And it's a problem that this Parliament needs to take more responsibility for over the coming years, acknowledging, as I do, the increased funding that has come forward from, uh, from the Officers of Parliament Committee. Mr Speaker, when uh, the uh, Chief Ombudsman arrived at the Government Administration Committee, she spoke about the fact that they, they would not meet their targets this year. This was due to a lack of resources. Cases were becoming increasingly complex and requiring longer investigation. Uh, the budget for the office had been established on the basis of a workload of 800 to 1,000 cases. At the moment, there are 1,854, 1,854 live cases in the office. That, that, that's previously, and, and there is now some increase, but they still won't meet that case. And in fact, there are th when the um, Chief Ombudsman went to the committee, 300 cases were unallocated. That's 300 cases that haven't even been begun being dealt with. This is not acceptable, Mr Speaker, in an agency. That's within the 1854, yep, so that's, that is unacceptable. Mr Speaker, one other point that the, uh, that the Chief Ombudsman made that I do want to mention before my time runs out was about staff wellbeing. And I do acknowledge that some of the $300,000 will go towards that. But to hear the Chief Ombudsman talk about the fact that the office is worried about staff sickness, high rates of serious illness and the stress placed on staff is extremely worrying that that situation had been created. We need to look after people who are working in the public service, not put them under so much stress that they're unable to do their work. The Chief Ombudsman also recognised that the government's public sector reform programme, the cutting of funding to the public sector, will actually increase the amount of work that's going to come to the office. So while the additional funding is welcome, there are still too many unallocated cases and there is more work coming down the pipeline, both from public sector changes and the outcomes of the Canterbury earthquake, which I think will have a significant impact on the Office of the Ombudsman's work. That means this office will no doubt be back 
next year seeking more funding, and we need to take seriously that. Respect the constraints that the government is working under, but it's clear to me that the fiscal squeeze from the government has had impact on the, on the amount of resourcing available to the Office of the Ombudsman. It is too important, Mr Speaker, for our transparency, for the accountability of government agencies and for our democracy as a whole to see the Ombudsman's Office starved of funding. We need to support it as a parliament. I hope in the future we will discuss in more detail how we can get the resources to the office that it needs. I call the Honourable Member Gareth.